All right, guys, today we're going to be talking about military and law enforcement folders, fixed blades, and multi tools. I'm going to be going over my choices, of course, from my collection of blades that I would recommend, and like I said, all of the categories of folding knives fixed blades and multi-tools. I think these are all really invaluable tools to law enforcement and military troops and just overall giving my kind of feedback of these tools as it relates to their jobs. Now, of course, once again, like folders are gonna be for different applications than fixed blades and you know, multi-tools are gonna be different applications than those two as well. So everything kind of fits a role. And in my personal opinion, I would probably run a folder, fixed blade, and a multi-tool. I know in my personal EDC, I always run at least a folder and a multi-tool. So, you know, a lot of these aren't necessarily like choose a multi-tool or choose a folder or choose a fixed blade and just negate the rest. So this is a, a kind of just a lineup of knives that I think are very applicable to, you know, the broad spectrum of use. And obviously too, when I say military and LE, this isn't the same thing as like, oh yeah, you want to take one of these into combat and you know, you don't need a rifle, you don't need a handgun. No, obviously you need other things. These are just tools, you know, like these are for use, opening packages and or, you know, opening different things, processing different things. And of course, you know, multi-tools might be, you know, working as far as utility goes. And of course, the fixed blades will lean a little bit more into the self-defense aspect, at least in my opinion. That's how I visualize fixed blades as a little bit more self-defense oriented. So first off, we're going over folders. Now with folders, we're gonna start from budget and go to the more expensive tools. And we're gonna do that as a rule with this uh, kind of list. So first off, we have the Spyderco Delica 4. This is one that I actually see a lot of military LE already running. And I think this makes a really good point for a starting or entry point into knives as a whole and just good utility blades um, when it comes down to it. Like the Delica 4 is just a decent size. Once again, this isn't the type of thing that you're gonna pull out to save your life. I mean, technically, you know, any knife could be a weapon, but this isn't really going to be, you know, like a mainline self-defense tool, but for opening packages, doing general you know, utility knife tasks, the Delica 4 has a decent blade length. And what I like the most like this example, you can get them in things like K390, which is going to perform well and just hold an edge for a long time. So I think it makes a lot of sense to go with something like a Delica 4 if you're starting out and you want a general utility folder. Another one that I think goes hand in hand with this is the Benchmade Griptilian. I personally like the Benchmade Griptilian 550, which is this model right here. I think it just is, once again, a very good utility styled knife. It's not necessarily going to win any award shows, but if you're looking for something that has a little bit better blade length and, um, you know, maybe a little bit more decent performance because these now come in S30V pretty much stock, um, these are going to be really good just starter knives. So I think both the Griptilian and the Delica 4 are good starter blades. Now, if you're wanting to upgrade and go into something a little bit more expensive, I would recommend looking at Emerson. This is an Emerson Commander and uh, I, I like the deeply recurved edge partly because I think it's cool but this is just a workhorse of a blade so something like the Emerson Commander is a good choice another one that I like personally is the Emerson Patriot and I think the Patriot is a little bit more tactical it's a little bit longer blade um, and it has a clip point um, or almost buoy styled tip with the recurve now the recurve on the Patriot is a little bit more um, um, you know, kind of gentle as opposed to the commander's deep recurve. This one's a little bit more gentle of a recurve, but still recurved. And so this one's definitely, um, both the commander and the Patriot are pushing more into defensive tactical styled knives. Whereas, you know, the Benchmade and the Delica 4 um, are a little less tactical and a little bit more practical. So I think, you know, you have to kind of, you know, weigh what exactly you want out of a knife, but but, you know, either way, um, I think Emerson is a really good stepping point 
for tactical blades as a whole. So yeah, Emerson, really good um, kind of option as you're wanting to step more up into, you know, knives. Once again, Emerson's are gonna run you typically in the $200 price range. Now, stepping it up, and once again, looking at another Benchmade, I think another one that would be very applicable to, you know, military law enforcement is going to be uh, Benchmade's automatic knives. Now, the Infidel does exist, and I think the Infidel is one of the most commonly issued military knives. I think that the Infidel is a really trashy knife, actually, like in all honesty, for military use, just because it's a double-edged dagger, and unless you're specifically using it for self-defense, it's not really going to be the type of thing you want to cut your MRE bags open with or you know like really do utility work with because once again you'd have a sharpened back edge however if you still want that automatic functionality and you want a bench made I think that the auto Adamus or the 2750 is a superior option not to mention um, typically speaking the infidels come in D2 tool steel whereas these guys now come in CPM crew wear so you're going to get a better edge retention better corrosion resistance, better performance out of the steel as a whole, going with a you know, auto Adamus, and you're still, once again, getting that automatic functionality. Now, it is a little bit more of a two-handed close. I mean, you can still technically close it one-handed, as you can see. It's definitely a handful to close one-handed, but it can be done. However, I think, like I said, the sheer functionality of the Adamus knife as a whole, especially in its automatic form, gives it a superior edge. All right, last one up for the folders specifically is going to be the Strider SNG. Now the Strider SNG is definitely a little bit more of a, I don't know if I'd say a flex, but kind of a flex because it is a very expensive knife in comparison to the previous ones. Like I've been slowly stepping it up. Like the Emerson's are about 200 to $300. The Auto Adamus is about 350, but this is about 600. And so you're definitely stepping it up in price. But at the same time too, if you are doing Doing a lot of work and you just want a well-made well-crafted you know um, folder that's going to be able to take on a lot and just perform well i think you'd be really hard pressed as far as you know once again military le um, kind of environments you'd be really hard pressed to beat something like a strider smg um, or an smf and the smf was actually um, made for the marine raiders so it definitely has a, a lot of um, kind of a lot of focus and attention built towards the military side of things. Now, once again, looking at other things, we have the fixed blades. So for me, like I kind of alluded to earlier, I, when I think of fixed blades, typically, um, I usually think of fixed blades in the regards or for primarily self-defense. And that is because if you're carrying a knife really more for utility, folders make a lot more sense than fixed blades because fixed blades can be a lot harder to carry and even if they aren't like these two are about the same size but you can see how much edge you give up in having a smaller fixed blade so fixed blades for me are a little bit more self-defense oriented and that's kind of where you want a fixed blade is you know in self-defense so that you have a more durable strong tool that is not going to you know break or snap or have a lock fail so anyways, the first one up is going to be the TKL Nightshade, preferably with the reverse Tonto blade shape. And I think the reverse Tonto just makes a lot of sense because once again, we're looking at something that you can use defensively in an ice pick or reverse grip to defend yourself. And in a pinch, something like the Nightshade is gonna be able to cut open things. It's gonna be able to do normal knife tasks. However, I will say doing things like breaking down um, cardboard and you know boxes and stuff are not going to be in this knife's wheelhouse and that's because you can see that on the nightshade in particular it has a very abrupt grind to it so the grind is very shallow and what that means is that there's a lot of steel behind the very cutting edge so the cutting edge is sharp but the problem with it is that there's um, just a lot of steel behind that cutting edge. So you're not gonna get a lot of slicing performance out of a knife like this. It's gonna be a lot more like stabbing and kind of fighting. And so for a self-defense knife, I think this is solid. For a utility knife, it's not going to be as well adjusted. 
Next up is going to be what I would consider still one of the best, you know, self-defense slash like military LE knives, and that is going to be the Topps Ice Dagger. Now the Ice Dagger is once again made by Topps Knives, and the Ice Dagger is designed or was designed by um, Andy Tran, and he designed it for in case of emergency kind of situation. So that's why the name the Ice in case of emergency uh, came about. But once again, very similar to a lot of the aspects of the Nightshade. The only difference is it's a little bit bigger. It's a bit thinner, which I actually do like. Um, so you can see that and it is of course a dagger so it is double edged once again this is not the type of thing you want to use for you know opening a package or you know processing things because you can't put your thumb on top of it because of course it's sharpened however if you do need to use this for self-defense or if you want to run this on like a plate carrier this is going to be a really solid option i like it specifically for plate carrier applications because it's very thin um, and once again it's not a very thick knife so you can you know put it in a kind of admin pouch or have it kind of you know in a spot on your plate carrier where you can have it quickly accessible and it's not going to leave a very large footprint so that's what I like about it most in addition I do like the way that they crafted the edge on this so if you do have to put it into a utility roll they basically did a differential grind so that the tip of the blade hopefully you guys can see here the tip of the blade has kind of almost an arrow shape so this whole tip is reinforced so the whole tip is reinforced and is thicker so that when you do go to stab something you have additional material so the blade's less likely to break snap chip and bend however you do have relief cuts in the towards the yeah, actual like working portion of the blade so the actual edge is thinned out unlike something like the TCAL where the TCAL is just very thick and very robust this guy is a little bit more thin on the kind of working portions of your edge so really nice and I think a well thought out design so lastly up for fixed blades is going to be the kind of bridge i would say and this is a utility slash fighting knife and this is going to be the bravo one by bark river and once again this is a knife that could be easily pushed into uh, self-defense in fighting roles if you had to this was um, originally designed of course bravo one was designed for force recon um, in the marines and so this does have some you know like serious backgrounds in fighting but it also does bridge into more utility roles so that was really what the bravo one was more designed for was utility but to be pushed into fighting if it needs to so i think the bravo one gets overlooked nowadays because there's a lot of maybe more hot brands out there like half face blades and even tops knives but the bravo one once again does have a lot of military um, experience and time and want put into it like the the groups that came to make this knife knew what they needed and wanted out of a knife. So you kind of get that trickle down effect where you get what they uh, ultimately saw they needed in the field. So it's a really solid choice and uh, I do really enjoy using it both for survival and as a utility blade. Lastly is going to be, of course, the multi-tools. So multi-tools for me are going to be the first one up, the Leatherman Surge. Now the Leatherman Surge is definitely big, heavy, and overbuilt, but I think that it honestly has the most tools and the most utility of just about any, especially plier-based multi-tool out there. And so it's very hard to go wrong with if you are truly going for something that you need a plier based multi-tool for once again a lot of these knives are going to be good for you know your basic utility of cutting things but if you need more than that i think the surge is a really solid choice to go with kind of stepping up because it's simply going to perform um, in my opinion better all right last one up is of course the leatherman charge plus now the charge plus and i could have also inserted the um, wave here because the wave is basically the same thing but the charge is just smaller so if you are wanting a plier based multi-tool and you're wanting something a little bit smaller than 
the Wave, but you want the same tool set, the Charge is a really good option. So I would say that, you know, for like military applications, Surge would probably be a really solid choice. And I do realize there are things like the Mutt and um, it's an okay knife, but I think that the Mutt, or I should say multi-tool, but I think the Mutt really is like super specific focused for maintenance of like an M16, M4 platform. And I think it basically puts all its chips in that singular isolated unit. And I really dislike that. Whereas things like the Charge, like the Surge are more general, just utility multi-tools that you're gonna be able to use to do a lot of different things as opposed to just maintaining a firearm. So I do like the Charge. I think the Charge would be a phenomenal choice, especially for more of the LE or Leos, um, this is going to be really more what you're going to want. It's going to have a, a wide variety of tools, especially your fully serrated blade, your you know fully straight blade, um, and then of course just scissors and just general things, pliers obviously. So I think those two are the ones that make the most sense in my opinion. Um, the Skeletool could be another venerable option. But once again, I think the Skeletool is just a little bit too small and it does not have a fine like needle nose plier head to it so I would probably pass on that one so I would say the charge and the surge are going to be my options anyways guys hopefully you enjoyed the video as always god bless and I'm out